So we understood how JWT based authentication work in our previous video. Uh, this is the basic flow of JWT based authentication. Let's go ahead and implement the same workflow in our application. So as per the flow, uh, first of all, user should be able to provide uh, some credentials for authentication. But we have not added a user class yet. Uh, let's add the same uh, that represents the user of our application. A user uh, should have an ID uh, of type integer. Add another property of type string for username. And the third one is password. I'm taking it as a string for now. But we will change it to another type uh, in upcoming videos because we do not want this password uh, to be stored as a plain text uh, that anyone can read in the database. Both of these uh, fields, username and password, uh, should be mandatory fields. Let's keep it simple for now. And these three fields are enough to understand authentication. Uh, we will add more fields in this class later in this tutorial. And to get this entity accessible uh, using entity framework, and create the table in database using database migration. We need to add this class in data context. Add another DB set of type username and name it users because it is going to hold the data of multiple users. Open up the terminal window to add database migration. Make sure you are in your web API project folder and run this command .NET EF migration add and your migration name. Let's name it add user as this migration will add a user table in our database. So migration has been added and it is showing a warning as well that this migration may result in data loss. Let's review the migration. You can see uh, we have added user entity only, but why this migration is altering cities table as well it is altering the column country uh, from nullable to not nullable that means before this migration this field was not mandatory but now it will become a mandatory field in the database once we apply this migration and this is happening because we have made some changes in city class in our input validation we have added this required attribute on this country field that is why our migration is altering uh, this column in the database. So that should be okay. And if we uh, go to the database and inspect the current data in the table, uh, we can see we are going to make this country field mandatory. But this field still has null data in uh, for a few records. It is very important that migration uh, should be carefully inspected. Otherwise, uh, we may break uh, something in our application. And it is very dangerous uh, if migration will make such changes in production database. So after adding database migration, uh, we need to run a database update command to get this migration applied uh, to the database. But I know this migration is going to fail because it is making the country field not nullable. And we still have few null values in that field uh, for a few records. Yup, migration failed. With this error message that it cannot insert the value null into the column country of cities table as it is now not nullable as per the migration. So what can we do in this case? One thing that you may be thinking uh, is that we can update tables uh, with some default values in the database to fix this issue. And yes, you can do that. But that is not a good approach. We should not directly update database uh, to resolve such issues. Instead, our migration only handles uh, such problems. So we can update our migration manually uh, to update null values in the database. We can run any SQL statement using migration builder dot SQL. And in this method, we can provide any SQL query. Let's update the cities table and set country equal USA where country is null. We can keep the same code pattern and make it all caps. All that is not mandatory. We can use all small as well, but usually we keep all SQL commands in capital letter and all other variables and fields in small letter. So this SQL query will update the country column to USA 
uh, if it is null before altering uh, this column and if now we will run this database update command it should be successfully executed build failed seems i have done something wrong in migration yep i forgot to put a semicolon here uh, rerun this command yep this time it is successfully executed and if we uh, refresh that table you can see all null values are replaced with the USA. So now we have a user entity and a table is created in the database to store username and password. Next we should have a method in our application that should authenticate the user using username and password. As we are using repository pattern in this project, all the methods are responsible to perform different operations on user entity should be handled by user repository. So first of all, uh, we should have an interface to define the signature of different methods we are going to implement in user repository and it should have an authenticate method uh, that should return a user. As we want to make uh, this method asynchronous, uh, it should return a task of type user and this method should accept username and password. Add the required references. And for now, let's keep this one method only in this interface. We will add more methods uh, like register and other methods uh, to handle user entity in this interface later. Let's add the user repository and implement this interface next. Name it user repository and drive it from the interface. control dot and select this implement interface to add all the methods we have defined in this interface add a constructor to inject data context data context is what uh, we use in entity framework to perform various operations on the database initialize this field now we can use this data context in our authenticate method and to fetch the user detail on the base of username and password Let's make this method async and we will return a user using data context dot users and use first or default async. This method will ensure to return the first value from user table if multiple entries exist for the same username. It will return null if no data exists for the given username and password. Here in this method we can use lambda expressions to filter the data on the base of conditions like x goes to x dot username uh, equal equal username and x dot password equals password to get this method accessible in our controller uh, we need to add the i user repository interface in i unit of work and finally implement this getter method in the unit of work class uh, that is implementing this i unit of work interface i know all of these uh, steps are cumbersome to follow but this architecture will help to make our code more cleaner and maintainable in the long run when this application will grow now we can add a controller uh, that will expose our api endpoints let's name it account controller as it is going to control the user account related information if we look at the city controller, we are using these attributes on the top of the controller. Uh, we already have discussed the use of these attributes in our previous video. Similarly, uh, we can add these attributes above our account controller as well. As a programming principle, you should not repeat yourself. As we are going to add many controller in our application and to avoid some code repetition, uh, we can create a base controller and use these attributes in the base controller now we can remove this code from our city controller and just drive it from base controller
We will add more code to our base controller uh, later in this tutorial and that will be common to our all controller. Uh, let's uh, derive this account controller as well uh, from base controller. Add a constructor and uh, inject unit of work. Initialize the local field for this parameter. Add a public method for login. Let's make it asynchronous and uh, it should return a task of type I action result. Name it login. And the clients who are going to use this method should be able to pass user ID and password in this method. At present, user class only contains uh, these two properties. Uh, we can use user class here to get that information from the user. It is showing error here because we need to bring in uh, required references. So we can use a user class here uh, to accept user ID and password information. But to remind you, uh, we should never use our domain classes as input and output in these public methods. So what we will use here, we will use a DTO here. Let's name it login request DTO. REQ here is the short form of request. Everything uh, that we submit on HTTP is usually called request and what we return is called response. Let's add this uh, DTO class and uh, add two property in this class. One to accept a username and uh, another one for password. Bring this class in account controller. Add a local variable uh, to get user information from the database. We already have added authenticate method in our user repository. So we can access this uh, using the unit of work dot repository dot authenticate and pass the username and password that we are getting as the input parameter of this login method. And if the user is authenticated, we will get user information in this variable. Otherwise, we will get null in this variable. And we can check if the user is null. Or we can just return unauthorized error to the user. We should not give more information here like if user ID is wrong or password is wrong or a user does not exist in the database here. Because if we provide all these information, hackers can get direction to create their strategy or to break the security of our application. And finally, if the user is successfully authenticated, we can return OK status and return the user information to the client. But again, we should never use domain classes as output. I will change it to a DTO. But before that, let's test this API endpoint using Postman if everything is working fine or not. So to get this method accessible as endpoint, we need to decorate it with HTTP verb. Use HTTP post and provide template name as login. So this endpoint will look uh, something like this. API slash account slash login. Let's save it and run the application. Open up postman. We need to call this endpoint and select a post here as HTTP verb and pass the username and password in body as a JSON text. As there is no user at present in our database, uh, it should return unauthorized error. Yup, we got unauthorized error. Let's add a username in the database. We should pass through the authentication method now. Perfect, we get this OK status as successful request and get this user information as a response. If we pass the wrong password, uh, we should get unauthorized error. So our method is working fine. Let's replace this user object with DTO uh, because we will add more information to this user class and uh, we do not want to expose all that sensitive information in response. Let's name it login response DTO and we will return username as response. 
and on successful authentication uh, we will return jwt token as well in response this token we will use further in all of our requests for authentication instead of checking user id and password in the database uh, for authentication every time add a variable uh, for login response of type login res dto add set username equals user dot username and set token as well here we will create a function next uh, to generate this token but for now let's just return a dummy value here and return this login response uh, variable in place of user class now we should get username and token in response perfect so we have been able to complete the first step of authentication as per the workflow in the next video, we will generate this JWT token on successful authentication. So see you in the next video. Stay tuned and wish you all a very happy new year.